in my class i have told you that refraction survey should precede a reflection survey in order to understand the low velocity zone the low velocity zone is important because here the waves which travel are Rayleigh waves and the love waves and those are noise for us it is known as ground roll and that need to be mathematically removed in order to go below this low velocity zone while planting the shock points for the reflection survey now in the refraction survey we don't require much energy so we can use a gong and a hammer and that is the energy which is required to go into the subsurface and then come back to the surface by the process of refraction in this diagram you can see that s is the source and g is the geophone the geophone is the receiver the source is the hang on the hammer and the gong we strike it the energy goes inside it gets refracted and then come back to the geophone we know that this is where the love waves and value waves are traveling two objectives are there one objective is to understand the velocity in the lbz the second is to understand the velocity below the layer where the refraction has taken place the distance between the source and geophone is known as offset and we all know from our understanding of sound and light which we have learned in class 10 and 12 that what is snell's law snell's law is sin of theta 1 by sin of theta 2 is equal to v1 by v2 where v1 is the velocity of the first layer v2 is the velocity of the second layer since there is a refraction here that means the angle of incidence is a critical angle sin ic by v1 is equal to sin 90 degree by v2 so sin ic is equal to v1 by v2 and ic is equal to sin inverse of v1 by v2 while there is a refraction happening we have three time which adds up to the reflection time one is t1 the second is t2 and the third is t3 but we can see here t1 and t3 are same so we put it as 2t1 plus t2 let z be the thickness of the first layer so if you put it we will have 2z by v1 cos theta that means z v1 cos theta is t1 and since we told it is 2t1 it will be 2z v1 by cos theta plus x which is the whole offset minus this part and this part which are equal so those are <coughs> z tan theta so we subtract x minus 2z tan theta which is this part only and has been traveled by velocity v2 if you arrange it it will be x by v2 plus 2z by v1 cos theta and if i put the value of cos theta then it will be x by v2 plus 2z by v1 v2 square root of v2 square minus v1 square now if you take the direct wave the direct wave has traveled from x to g we plot that it will start in a tx plot from the zero and it will be a straight line y is equal to mx plus c now if i put this equation as t refraction is equal to x by v2 plus t0 then t0 is the intercept which can be found from the graph tx and we will not have any head wave or refraction wave after this point 
So you interpolate it into the t axis and you get t0. And your first wave starts here. So we'll find out two things z, which will take the help of t0. And if you put that t0 value, we will know the value of v1 and v2 from the slope of this straight line. The direct wave inverse slope will give you velocity v1 and the refraction wave slope inverse will give you v2. We will put the value of v1 and v2. We know t0 from the y axis, so we know the value of z. And crossover from where the direct wave has been crossed by the refraction wave is given as 2z v2 plus v1 divided by v2 minus v1 square root. Please derive the same equation for a three layer case and a multi layer case and see how the response is. Thank you very much. After the refraction survey, we have to do the reflection survey and I will show you for a two layer case how the equation should be derived. Look at the figure here that the offset between the source and view phone is x and the ray have gone down here to the reflecting surface and come back here. It has produced two angles theta and theta and the distance between the source to the point which is called the CDP point O is k and from the CDP point to G is also k. So if you take the reflection time t, it is SO plus OG by velocity. V is the velocity of the first layer. Now we know that if we project a line from O to the ground level, it divides the offset into x by 2 and x by 2. So k square is equal to x by 2 whole square plus z square using the Pythagoras theorem and k is equal to square root of x square by 4 plus z square. The reflection time t is given as 2k by v. So t is equal to 2 square root of x square by 4 plus z square divided by v. And if you square both the sides, it will be t square is equal to 4, open a bracket, x square by 4 plus z square, close the bracket, divided by v square. So we have t square is equal to x square by v square plus 4z square by v square within the bracket. Now if you plot between the t square and x square, you will get a straight line, whereas t by x, you can see that we are actually going to draw a parabola. So when you make an equation Tx, we have first the direct wave, then the refracted wave and the reflection will be asymptotic to the refraction at a higher offset value. Do a similar exercise for reflection in case of 2 layer case, 3 layer case and multiple layer case. Thank you very much.